Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. All blessings, glory, honor, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone who taught me his truth. And salutation to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabar, back with another lesson, Lord willing to edify. And to feed the lambs of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai through the Holy Spirit, Rakaku Dash. Lord willing, this is edifying, straight to the point. And I just want to talk about um real quick in this lesson about the the ongoing food crisis. As I was watching the Apostle Taha, he had did a video concerning the food crisis, concerning famine, and he was going into a bunch of list of different preppers and and, and different channels and different headlines of certain videos and this thing is this thing is well known it should be well known at this point the only people that don't know are jake okay jake you israelites so-called israelites i mean excuse me so-called jake which are the israelites excuse me so-called blacks latinos and native americans all right and the average joe either might don't know either you know what i'm saying and the the, the sheep the yellow the yellow list sheep they don't know and real quick you know i was out and about today you know, with the family or whatever, we uh, went out. So we we stopped at this one particular spot, this this store, and it was this guy. That he's a Jake, straight up Jake, straight up Israelite. But he looked he looked just like an Edomite. He looked like an Edomite. He looked like an Edomite with swag, right? So to so to speak, for lack of a better term, swag as the word would call it. You know, a little a little you know uh, salt, a little bit of salt. You know, some salt to him or whatever. You know what I mean? Some some Jake dude, older older gentleman, probably in his, his 45, 50. You know, but we was talking. I was looking at I was looking at some stuff that he um he was pretty much selling or whatever. And we ended up talking. He asked me how long I've been around in the um in the neighborhood or or you know in the, wherever I'm at, whatever. And I told him, yeah, I've been around you know for X amount of time, such and such. He was like, okay, you know, he's like, yeah, a lot of people moving here and da 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 da. So I'm like, yeah, man, you know, the 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 housing market, you know, people was fair buying, moving, you know, just booming. You know, things became, uh, you know, things started moving fast pretty much. And he was like, yeah, man, I've been out here for 14 years, you know, I've seen a lot of a lot change. And he was like, yo, these people out here are stupid. He pretty much said they're stupid because, for lack of a better term, I believe he said it was stupid because they don't know what's going on, they don't know what's coming. They don't, he said, he told, he's telling me this, that he don't, they don't know that this economy is about to crash. They don't know that inflation uh, uh, is going to mess with the get, with the truck drivers, all right? It's going to mess with the truckers. The truckers ain't going to be able to come and um, bring food. He was telling me about how Cali uh, diesel prices is through the roof in, in California. He knows somebody, you know, he was telling me all these type of things. So now, you know, I started engaging back a little bit, you know, and, and it was, was just chopping it up with this guy. And he started going into how, you know, uh, Esau and his gun reforms and how these shootings and all this. So this guy, he, he might be a prepper. I ain't asking him all of that. <laughs> I wouldn't ask him that because, you know, any prepper in their right mind wouldn't really tell you that they're a prepper. You know what I'm saying? But I got, I definitely got some prepper vibes from, from, um, vibes from this guy. He was there with his family, his wife and his kids and his dog, at, you know, at, at his shop or whatever. And, um... He sounded like a prepper. Could have been, could have not been. I, I don't know, but, you know, the Jake was on point. You know what I'm saying? I, I could tell you that, you know, he was a Jake through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Shah. But nonetheless, that's a testimony that some, you know, few people know what's going on. A, the few, you know, the very few know what's going on, but then it's mostly Jake's Israelites that don't know what's going on. Neither do they care about what's going on. You know, they, they're more concerned with their distractions. As long as these things are brewing and going on, Esau is going to continue to, to get him the distractions until he's ready to pull the plug on these particular distractions. All right, because when he's so-called, when the Lord is ready to have Esau pull the plug on the, on the internet, YouTube, or, or different outlets, that's when, it, that's when it is what it is. That's when these people are going to get a reality check because they're going to have no choice but to wonder what's going on and, and, and you know, you know, inquire about what's really going on in this world. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, man, um, I'm going I'm to play this, probably like a minute or two of this right here. And in, it's entitled, uh, UN warns, United Nations warns of global food crisis. 
famine as war in Ukraine drags on. And this is what's coming. And of course, Esau is now admitting it because it's inevitable. In other words, it's inevitable. If you know something's going to crash, you know, while it, while you see the signs, you're going you're gonna to say, yo, this thing is about to crash or whatever. But here it is the prophets were saying it before it was even in sight, before it was even a thing to, to, to be even reckoned. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the job of a prophet. The word prophet or prophesy means to say before. So that the, the prophets have been doing their jobs through the spirit, you know, from the apostles on down. The prophets have been doing exactly that, prophesying, saying before. So now that it is no longer something before it happens, now Esau is coming out and saying it because it's already happening. So Esau ain't prophesying shit. It's inevitable. It is obvious that this place is circling the drain. That's why Esau is coming out and saying it. Plus, he wants to be, you know, the one to say, see, I told you so. You know what I'm saying? Like like the elder uh, Malcolm has said in, in the comment section of one of my videos, he said, um... It was about the DHS, Department of Homeland Security. You know, like the brother said, man, these guys are comedians because now they're telling you that it's going to be a, a summer of chaos when they're the ones who orchestrate the chaos. No shit is going to be a summer of chaos. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Esau is again trying to control the narrative. Narrative, You know, but anyway, let me play this and let me bring the scriptures out. I don't want to keep rambling. Thanks so much for joining us on this Sunday. More than 100 days into the war in Ukraine, the United Nations is warning yet again of a devastating global food crisis. Tens of millions of tons of grain remain blocked in Ukraine's ports. Russia is being accused of using food now as a weapon of war. Amin Awad is the UN's crisis coordinator for Ukraine. I spoke to him earlier about the negotiations to end the blockade and those growing concerns around food insecurity. Amin Awad, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. Um, as as I'm sure, here. yes, I appreciate it very much. I know you're busy. As I'm sure many people know, tens of millions of tons of grain uh, needs to be exported out of Ukraine. It is blocked. Can, can you explain to us what or who is blocking it from getting out? Well, you know, there is a war here, and the Black Sea has been also a theater of operation uh, by both sides, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, the ports that uh, Ukraine used traditionally to export uh, uh, wheat and other grain are here, here in the Black Sea. And therefore, uh, with the blockade of, uh, of uh, maritime in the Black Sea, uh, Ukraine is facing difficulty exporting it is grain. Uh, this season, uh, they must be exporting about 20 to 22 uh, million tons, and they embark on transporting some of it through neighboring countries to the Black Sea, uh, through Poland, and uh, perhaps to reach also the Baltic Sea. Uh, however, uh, these are small quantities that could uh, add up to be maybe 10% of the total that they should uh, they should export. Therefore, uh, sea transport is the viable uh, option they have to really export this as uh, soon as possible. So I, I know Russian's foreign minister has said that Russia is not blocking the passage of the ships, but I also know that the UN has been leading negotiations with Russia to try and make sure the grain gets released. W what can you tell us about where those negotiations are at at this point? I'm not going to play the rest. I'm well, gonna, um, I'm not going to play the rest. I'm going to leave this in the description box. But even with this being said, this is, um, I believe this is a Canadian, uh, CBS, CBC News, I believe, yeah, that's, that's Canada. But, you know, hey, Esau is going to push his version of the of the truth. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna, always going to continue to push his version of the truth. And that's nothing new. This has always been, that's always been a tool in propaganda or a tool in war, which is propaganda. All right. And this thing was inevitable. All right. This was inevitable. Like I told the, the homeboy, the, the, the older Jake, you know, who looked like an Edomite, but that dude was a straight up Jake. You know, just by the way he was talking, just straight up. But anyway, like I was telling him, all of this high prices and, and everything was inevitable. And it had nothing to do with no war in the Ukraine and, and no Russia this and Russia that. You know what I'm saying? That was inevitable. The timing, the timing is just perfect. <laughs> just think about it like that. The timing is perfect. All right? All right, so we're going to go to war with the Ukraine and... and oh, oh. Russia, you know, Russia's going to go to war. Um, Ukraine is going to go to war. Russia, Russia going to go war with Ukraine. And then simultaneously, 
We're going to have high fuel prices and a surge of inflation, which eventually will lead to hyperinflation. So the timing is perfect. And Yahweh Bashim Yashai, man, he, he's the most high. He created time. So everything is on his watch, on his clock. All right. So, you know, this even this article, this uh, news clip right here, it's just more propaganda for the people, man. Whether they, whether, you know, Russia's taking it and or they, they all doing what they doing. And then after, after it's all said and done, they going to have some, some Georgie vodka, or some shit together and, and, and talk about the new world order, you know, whatever. We, we know <laughs> and that's why it's beautiful to know the truth because we know the the end all be all we know the end all be all man we know that regardless of whatever story they tell us we know that it's lining up with biblical prophecy all right so anyway i just want to get some scriptures touching on famine and that would be it i'm not gonna make this uh, too long lord willing so um this is the book of isaiah the third chapter in verse one it says for behold, the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. Which, what is that talking about? It's talking about famine. All right? That's talking about famine. Bread and water symbolizes when the Lord when the Lord breaks the staff of bread or take away the staff of bread or the stay of bread, he's going to cause a famine. And famine is a tool that the Lord have always used when Israel rebelled against the Heavenly Father. And how do we know that? Ezekiel the 14th chapter. Um, and 12, it says, The word of the Lord, Yahweh, came, came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, the land of Israel, the land is talking about Israel, because a land, a physical land where there's soil and dirt and trees and grass and bugs and insects, it can't, die, they don't sin. The only people that were given the law were the, are the Israelites. All right, and sin is transgression of the law. So First uh, John three and four, three and four. All right. So when the land sinneth, when the Israelites sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, all right, grievously, Israel in these times. This, 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 hey man, see, you we gotta you know factor in that when certain things happened back then, and how bad it was, and how how much it was exaggerated back then. How much more now? Israel's beyond gone, beyond wicked, bro. Beyond, you know, uh, uh, dross and, 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 and filth. They have trespassed beyond, you know, you know, words can express. Well, the scriptures say trespass grievously. How about that? The scriptures say grievously. That's, that's two-thirds of Israel. You know what I'm saying? Least they repent. Well, two-thirds they can repent, but that's Israel. Least they repent. And the only ones that will repent is the one third, starting with the elect. But two thirds will not repent. All right. So at one point we all sinned and fell short of the glory and fall short of glory. But the Lord have always, the, the the prophets have always pushed repent to the heavenly Father. Repent, repent, and repent. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, you put in repent in the in a word search, it will pop up tons of times in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. So. Even when the Lord, before Yahweh Shah, repentance was always pushed. Matter of fact, I'm, let me do that real quick since I said it. R E P E N T, repent. All right. Like, let's go to Jeremiah. Let me see, let me see what Jeremiah says. It says. Let me see. I'm just reading through it. Ezekiel says, what? Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord power, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your face from all your abominations. Uh, 18 to 30, it says, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Um... from his evil and repent so you got the word repent written plenty of times throughout the scriptures man alright I read a couple in Ezekiel 
And you got a bunch here in the New Testament. It says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, the Lord came not to call righteous, but since repentance. Anyway, it's all about, you know, repentance and who's going to repent? The elect, all right? The one-third, those that are going to be saved. So let me jump back to Ezekiel 14 and 13. It says, son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and I will break the staff of bread, of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. So when, when the land of Israel, when Israel, excuse me, trespassed grievously against the Heavenly Father, that's when he stretches his hand out. All right, that's when he break the staff of the bread and sends famine and cut off man and beast because one, it, because who, well, man and beast, man, when, when a beast can't be fed, all right, they talking about grain shortages and, and all the, the supplies they need to, to feed the beast, all right, the, the, the farm animals or whatever, they saying that, that's gonna affect the livestock, the beast, and all that. And when they when they start when they start starving, they're gonna kill them. They're gonna cull them. They're gonna cull them and eat them. All right. And then when they gone, then there's no more there's no more beasts of the field to eat. So now they're gonna have to turn to to, to abominable meats, and then eventually cannibalism. Cannibalism is coming back. All right. Let me tell you that in the book of Lamentations, how I believe I got it pulled up, but how they sodded their, their children. Because of the lack of bread, lack of meat. You know? So let me finish up in Isaiah 3 and 1. It says, For behold, the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay of the staff, and the whole stay of bread, and the whole stay of water. You know why? Because Jake, Israel, have trespassed grievously against the Heavenly Father. This is Ezekiel 5th chapter. And verse 16, it says, when I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction. All right, the Lord don't desire to save two thirds. Now I was thinking about it, man. Like, imagine how 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 rebellious niggas was when we left the land of Egypt. All right, and passed through the sea and, and wandered the wilderness. How how you know? How do you imagine something like that? Just look at the two. Just look at the niggas that are around today. These these niggas. These low life niggas. And then these women, these these so-called nigga, you know, these nigga women, whatever, Hispanic, Latino, whatever. All right, there is the tribes, the, the wicked of the tribes. And look, look at them today, and imagine wandering the wilderness with these people today, with their attitudes and their stuck-upness and their stubbornness and their wickedness. Imagine wandering the wilderness with these people today, these niggas today, man. That should give you a headache. You know, you you just want to kill, you just want to kill them. <laughs> That's why the Lord had it where 40 years, you know, these the rebellious older generation died out, you know? That's why they died out, man, because hey, the Lord is not going to repeat what happened in, in, in ancient Egypt, all right? This time, the only ones coming out of modern-day Egypt, a.k.a. America, is going to be the elect. Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, tell you it's no longer going to be said, the Lord lived that brought the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, but from the land of the north. Because this deliverance is going to be great. All right? This is it. The cutoff is now, man. Now is time of deliverance. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to, you know, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Because evil days are coming. Famine is coming. Famine is famine is definitely coming, man. You know? You know, and that, and that, and that Jake in the store, you know, he knew. He knew what time it was, man. That dude was, that dude was, he was very well, well equipped with what he was saying. You know? So, I mean, I know, I don't, Doubt he know the spiritual part about it, but hey, it is what it is. You know, so it says, and I will increase, let me read again. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts. Evil beasts, famine and evil beasts. The Lord, the Lord is about to unleash some evil beasts. And we was getting into that camp yesterday, man. You know, Esau got some weird hybrid creatures that he be creating. You know, and just some weird bugged out shit, you know. So, hey, the Lord is going to have all of that thing, all of that being un unleashed. You know, the Lord is going to put the spirit on these wild beasts to, to invade cities and, you know, come upon these cities and suburban areas. The bees going, uh, the, the bee, because they're going to be hungry too. They're going to be hungry too, man. You know? 
the ecosystem is gonna get all messed up. You gonna have Edomites out here trying to hunt for uh, uh, um, you know, wild creatures, dares, you know, what bears, whatever they could find. So now these natural uh, predators are gonna become, you know, they're gonna be thrown off course and off balance because now they can't eat. So now they're gonna be looking for whatever the hell they could eat. They're gonna be looking for people. You know, so the ecosystem is going to get all messed up. So it says, And they shall bereave thee, the pestilence and the blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And that's all coming to Babylon, man. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 1. And I'll, I'll start at 1 and jump down. It says, How do the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princes among the provinces, how has she become tributary? And that's talking about the Israelites. Verse 11, it says, And her people sigh, they seek bread. They have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. See, O Lord, and consider for I am become vile. All right? So you, all this is coming back. Remember, the thing written the four times written for our learning. And everything that's that's gonna happen, or everything that happened in the ancient world is gonna happen again. So it gives us an, an insight on what to expect again. Uh, uh, what is it? Daniel's twelve says one. Daniel's twelve and one says it's gonna be a time such as never before seen. So all the things that we've read about in the scriptures combine all of that in one, and that's that's gonna be is gonna be more worse for the future to come than everything combined. All the atrocities. The, the famines, the plagues, the pestilence. What's coming ain't going to even scratch the surface on, on these things. You know? So it says they have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. So people are going to be trading in there. They're trying to sell their gold, silver, jewelry. Whatever they think that's valuable. Trying to get something to eat. You know? It's going to get real, real out here, man. You know? Oh, shit, women gonna be selling they, they 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 box just to eat, and I'm not saying that to be funny, but I'm being dead ass serious. All right, I'm being dead serious. You know, and they do it for lesser things. How much more survival? So anyway, Lamentations four and nine, they that be slain with the sword are better than they that that be slain with hunger. So it's better for a person to die. By by the sword or get killed, than to die of, of starvation. You know, because a, a starvation is a long drawn out death. It's a long process. It's an agonizing pain. It's a mental pain. You know, and it lasts long. It lasts long. There's a whole science behind the process of starvation. That's the, the you, it's, it's a terrible thing to, to die of a famine. It's a terrible thing to die of a famine. Imagine, you know, going on a, a, few, a, a fast for a, a day or two or three or whatever, or however you may, and, and, and the way you feel. How much more when these people know they ain't got no, no meal in sight? They ain't got no, nothing to even consider to eat. It's, it's hopeless. The scriptures say that, man. And, um, I believe it's in the Apocrypha that the, the hope of the, uh, something about the, the hope of the ungodly. Let me see if I can pull it up right, right quick. Ungodly, hopeless. Let's see, that's an apocrypha. There you go. For the uh, wisdom of Solomon 5 and 14. For the hope of the ungodly is like the dust, is like dust that bloweth, blown, that is blown away with the wind. Again, for the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind. Esau is ungodly. Starting with Esau, he's ungodly. Then he's, these heathens are ungodly. And then you got two thirds that follow after Esau, Edom. They are like the father of the devil. All right, so the hope of the wicked, the ungodly, is like dust that is blown away with the wind. It's here one minute, it's gone the next. There's no surety. There's no surety. All right, no, no, no faith and no nothing behind it. It's just, it's here one minute, it's gone the next. Like a thin frog that is driven away with the with the storm. Like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with the tempest. So when all hell break loose, there will be no hope for the ungodly. That's why ultimately the scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. The fear of the Lord is the strength of our salvation. You know, roughly paraphrasing that, you know. So our ultimate hope is trust in Yahweh Baha, Shem Yahweh Shai, faith 
wisdom and knowledge. That's our hope. That's 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 what we got. It says, and passes away as the remembrance of a guest that tarries but a day. In other words, there's no hope for the ungodly. So back in Lamentations 4 and 9, it says, They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away stricken through the want uh, of the fruits of the field. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. All right. Remember, this is the book of Lamentations. Lamentations. All right. Lamenting. And it's going to be mass great lamentations in the near future to come. People will be lamenting for the lack of bread, for sicknesses. You know, people are gonna get sick with whatever, whatever was in that was whatever was in that um. You know that uh, the serpent's venom, the jump shot. You know what I'm saying? Whatever what the hell was in that, we're gonna see what's gonna be made from it, or what's gonna come out of it. You know, and then whatever other pestilence the Lord sends here. You know, it's going to be a lot of lamenting. People ain't going to be able to go to the hospital, take their kids to the hospitals. The kids going to be, you know, imagine their children going to be, I'm just painting a picture, but imagine their children all messed up, sick, and hungry. They're plagued with pestilence and they're plagued with hunger. You know, what is, as a, as a, as a parent, what are they going to do? How are they going to get by? Remember when, remember when two thirds gave up Yahweh Shah to be crucified, they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. That's what these niggas said, man. All right. They said, let his blood be upon us and our children. That's what they, that's what was said. So they got, you know, every other word that man shall, that man speak, he had to give account for in the day of judgment. We are in the time of judgment. We are approaching the time of judgment. We already here. Things are going to turn up. Indeed, this is the year of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai turning up. We are in June, the... Uh, uh, what is it? The 11th for no, not the 11th, the 12th. We in June 12th. You know what I'm saying? Halfway through the year, halfway through the year 2022, and the Lord have have most definitely been turning up, and we ain't done, bro. We are not done. It's more turning up to be done through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, bro. So, you know, stay in the spirit, man. You know, stay in the spirit, stay locked in, stay in the spirit, and be ready. Stay ready. You know, so say, anyway, it says, uh, verse 10, the hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children, meaning what? They sodden and preparing them for, for, for food, to eat, you know, prepping them, seasoning salt, whatever, however the hell it was doing it, man. It's sick, bro. I mean, this is coming back. If it happened then, but Daniel's 12 and 1 said, this is going to be a time like never before seen, then how much more now? Cannibalism is coming back. It says they were they were their meat. So the children, the children was was their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. So yeah, you better believe that, man. Cannibalism is definitely coming back. We about to see some atrocious shit, some real atrocities and some 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 gut wrenching sights, man. You know? That's why again the scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. That's what's gonna be able to keep a, a, a brother, all right, stable minded. You know, and you sisters out there, man. You know, if you ain't, if you don't have a husband, you know, pray that pray the Lord, you know, link you up with a man of the Lord. For dead ass, seriously, man. You know, pray for that. That should be in your prayers. That the, if you single out there, pray that the Lord pair you with a man of the Lord. And for you women that have husbands, pray, you know, pray that your man, you know, receive the word through you. All right, pray that he received the word through you. And both what I just said are, are biblical and scriptural. You know, an unbelieving husband can be con uh, convinced, you know, rough, you know, roughly paraphrasing through the belief of his own wife. You know, and the Lord will shield you. Y'all will be part of the, the one third, you know, or he can hear the word through you and, and, and possibly be a prophet. However, the Lord wanted to happen, man. You know, but for you single women out there, pray that the Lord pairs you up with a, with a man of the Lord that he, you know, links, you know, get you, you know, uh, with, with, with a man of the Lord because them days is coming. Them days are coming. And for you brothers, you know, stay in the spirit, you know, pray that we part of the elect, that we make it from what's coming because indeed this shit is about to go down, bro. And, and the crazy part about it is going to be the crazies. Remember there was a movie called The Crazies? Well, 
it's gonna be the crazies out here and and one thing i like about the um the walking dead when i used to watch it before it, before it got whack before it got corny in my opinion was that after like the first season the zombies wasn't even a threat no more man the the real threat was the people the people that were still alive those became the real threats it wasn't about the zombies and the walkers no more like that it was the people that's when it became more that's when it intensified and became you know, a show worthy to, to watch because all of that is coming back. It's gonna be survival of the fittest. Uh, <laughs> survival of the fittest, but the survival of the fittest. All right, and the only fit is gonna be those fit. You know, to 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 receive this word, this truth, wisdom, and knowledge. You know. You know, and you know, one more thing before I go. Another good movie. I believe the Apostle Gabar. I mentioned it before, but it's an actual movie called Blackout, and and, and a sister had referenced it in a comment board too. I actually watched it. It was it was a pretty de uh, decent movie. It's called Blackout on Tubi. It's called Blackout. And, and they show you how vulnerable women will be in that time, you know, and how suburb suburban areas eventually is going to get ransacked by people fleeing the cities and just all chaos, man. So I'm going to end it here. Global one, this is quick, edifying, straight to the point. Till next time, I say shalom to the elect and watch as well as pray. Shalom.